charging ultra man power. Please wait one percent. Two percent. <laughs> Left my f***ing toys at home! <laughs> There's too many options. Well, by popular demand, just me. I get to play with my toys for you guys even more. Last time we looked at the primary transformation toys from Orb, Jeed, and Rube, and this time... I may have gone a bit too far. We've got stuff from Ginga, X, Jeed, Taiga, and the currently running Zet. Are these <laughs> advertisements worth giving into, or should they be left to rot in my dumpster? Well, the unfortunate truth is that the latter is not happening because I've invested too much into these to do that in any good conscience. They'd have to really offend me to get that kind of treatment. Hey bro, the seams are bursting on your costume. The Ginga Spark is like meeting your new stepdad for the very first time. It's awkward, it feels wrong, but you learn to accept it after years of therapy. This thing's the granddaddy of these henshin gimmick toys, and as such, it has one of the silliest accessories. My dolls are finally useful! Yeah, pretty much every new Ultraman figure that was released up until Ultraman Orb had one of these live signs on the bottom of their foot. Scanning it with this or the Victory Lancer would let you ultra-live into any ultra or kaiju that you could possibly desire. That's probably more exciting to a six-year-old than it is to me. What? Press the trigger and you even get to hear the monsters roar! Wow! Yeah, this also meant that pretty much the entirety of the previous Ultra Monster series had to be re-released in this smaller scale, with a live sign on their toe to make this toy work proper. But on the other hand, this thing did let us get the wonderful world of New Gen and Reiwa Ultraman that kicks as much ass as it does today sometimes. So I don't know, maybe it's just a necessary evil. It kinda looks like a butt plug though, doesn't it? The X Divisor is a fun one because it's just a phone inside of the world's most gimmicky Otterbox case. Hey, hey Jake, uh, did I have a raise? No. It's a phone that Ultraman lives inside of just to make angry buzzing noises at you. It's got this little hole at the bottom of the screen, which I had assumed was a headphone jack so that you can use this to listen to some of your favorite tunes cruising down the street with your x divisor in hand. Nope. This is actually where you scan the live signs. That's right. This is compatible with all the live signs from every previous Spark doll. So you can slam them on this thing and it'll tell you their name and you'll realize what a waste of two seconds doing that even was. <laughs> And thankfully, Ultraman X delivers with cyber cards. If you bought any Ultraman vinyl from the X line, they'd come with a questionably large tag that contained one of these special cyber cards. So get ready to devalue your wasted earnings even more by tearing that bad boy right open. It is ridiculous how satisfying it is sliding these things in. It just keeps saying their name. And that can only entertain my pea brain for so long, you know. Let's go! X seed! X! I'll be honest here. Not a lot to say about this thing. At least the transformation's not too long or anything dumb like that, but this was definitely the thing that kickstarted the transformation item that doubles as an uber gimmicky weapon trope. You've got this big... 
bulbous button on the bottom that, uh, got a trigger, and it's got this fruit roll-up that you slide your finger across to make music. It's not working, stupid NES! <laughs> spent too much money on this. You're supposed to do certain combinations of finger slides and button presses and stuff to do certain attacks. But I don't know that, so if you plan on getting your degree in henshinology, then you better hit the books. You go. I go. Here we go. Ha! Ultraman Berio! Ultraman King! In the name of the King! Ultraman King! Time to defy fate! Whoa! I couldn't find my other plunger. I found the clog though. This thing is awful. I mean, let's put aside the fact that it gives rise to my least favorite Ultraman form ever and focus on the toy itself because this thing has issues. First off, it's way too small. I can barely fit my 21 year old meaty American man hands into this thing. How am I supposed to hold the sword like this? And not to mention, I keep pressing the trigger that's right here because of it. And there's another one down here. Is this thing a toy or a video game controller? Oh, and by the way, it doesn't even work. I can't do half the attacks because this thing doesn't register my hand waving in front of it. Maybe I'm not supposed to use the toy like this, but if I can't, then what's the point? And no, I don't have the instructions for this thing because I just found it in my public pool skimmer system. Do I look like someone that would pay full price to get this thing mint in box? So what can it do? Well, it surprisingly scans any capsule you shove into its gaping maw, but in my testing, it only does something unique with the select few capsules you see in the show. Everything else just gets a blanket hero capsule or monster capsule message. You can swing it around, I guess? I don't know. Son of a bitch! Ultimate final! Connect the wishes! Gee! You killed my waifu. Now I'm gonna return the favor. Maybe I should be nicer to this thing. After all, the only thing that it did was stop me from losing my virginity. This thing is one of the biggest deus ex machina devices in new gen Ultraman, but at least it doesn't completely look stupid and obnoxious. I mean, realistically, on my patented Henshin stupidity scale, this only ranked about a 6.5. It was the subject of my college thesis. Yeah, these eyes coming out of the top would have looked way cooler as like a cyber hologram or something creative. Not that I would have expected that kind of investment from Bandai in the toy itself, but uh, maybe in the actual movie when this thing is used, that'd be pretty cool. Also, how come I have to scan the capsule twice with the G-Driser for this transformation? Smells to me like padding. The Warrior of Light, Tiger! Shadow out here, Yuki! Buddy, go! Buddy, go! I can't believe I'm saying it, but I like this thing. Kinda, sorta, platonic. At least in terms of the grand scheme of the new generation toy gimmicks, the Tiger Spark doesn't look completely ridiculous and its transformation sequence is refreshingly short. That is until the halfway point in the series where I guess they panicked that the way you're supposed to play with the toy is not clear enough. So they add in this extra shot of Hiroyuki's hand scanning the keychain that completely breaks the flow of the entire sequence. Speaking of which, the additional toy gimmicks are actually very nicely done. The three main Ultras get these nice looking keychains they transform with, you know, rather than a baseball card or a plastic disc with a horn on it. 
<laughs> like, come on. I'd totally look awesome carrying this around with me everywhere. It feels like they've got a nice bit of passion put into them, rather than just being an obligation. I also have a bit too much fun playing around with this. I mean, I'm 21 years old, and I geek out when this keychain gets scanned through my hand. This thing is f magic! Ah! Tyga, try Blade! Burning up, together with my friends! Bloody. This thing is garbage. I fuck your mouth. This is the Orb Caliber's redneck, socially inept cousin. Hell, even some of the shots in the transformation look like straight carbon copies. Anyway, especially in comparison to Taiga's standard transformation, this thing is so slow and boring to watch. Ever wanted to see cartoon flames appear piece by piece on a plastic toy sword for 15 episodes straight? I know I do! It's not even fun to spin the little wheel around. It hardly turns at all, even when you feel like you're giving it a real good push. Maybe that's just my noodle arm muscles talking. But come on, there's gotta be a better way of making this thing more fun to mess with. Once you're transformed, though, it's just another one of those one press does this attack, two does this, three does this sticks. Nothing original. Just makes me want to puke a bit. Not again! Denuncio, access granted. Space martial arts, the inherited fighting technique. Master Zero. Master Seven. Master Leo. Zero. Seven. Fire. Okay! Go to the design! Ultraman! Zay! Ultraman! Zay! And here's the latest addition to the dysfunctional family, the Ultra Zet Riser. This thing is kind of fun to screw around with. It's got all my favorite satisfying actions in one condensed toy package. Card slotting, token insertion, and ratchet jointed plastic. Doing this really sends shivers down my spine because I realize that I spent $50 to feel good in my life for about 25 seconds total. It's a bit longer of a henshin sequence, undoubtedly due to the fact that every medal gets the prestigious honor of having its name said twice when you transform. Oh, and you gotta show them off in your hand before you do anything. It's also kind of strange that it's pretty much the exact same thing as the Jeed Riser in terms of plot relation. The risers and the medals are made in the land of light and stolen by someone. And then as the series goes on, everyone gets to have a riser pretty much. Anyway, how's the toy itself? Well, to be honest, annoying as sh Everything's all fine and well for the first few minutes, until it comes time to rotate the handle on the riser. This thing is so unresponsive, I don't know what the hell its problem is. Half the time when I'm trying to move it, it moves with the slightest touch, but other times I'm trying to play tug of war with Don Fry. Oh, but when it does move, you'd expect it to easily slot into place, right? Nope. Half the time I end up overshooting and missing my target entirely, but if that happens, you don't get to just go back and do it over again, no. You have to turn off the Zet riser, turn it back on, Go all the way back and then do it over again. Why is it so picky? The show makes it look so fluid and easy, but the toy makes me want to have an aneurysm! Listen, I just got this thing in the mail like last week, and I paid full price for it. It's only so far that I'm gonna go for a bad running joke. Just toys made for children, Jake. Who said that? We don't deserve this. You killed my waifu. But we made the show that introduced your waifu possible. And now, we must make you pay the price for your lack of vision. No. No, get away. No. 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 <laughs> Thank God, I was streaming all that. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not dreaming all of this. There's still a monster loose in this city with no sign of Ultraman anywhere. Who will save us now? <sighs> Come on.
All right, I'm finally ready to take you on now. I forgot the batteries. Dad! Damn you, Banda! Wait. There's still one more transformation gimmick I almost forgot about. My super secret stash. Ultraman Nice from Planet Toy One, here to mark the end for you! Oh, hey, Jay. How's it going? No! Big thanks to all of our Patreon supporters because they were the ones that made this video possible, including Liquid Pestar, Jaws Infinity, Project Godzilla, Goji73, Mason Ramon, Godzilla Productions TV, Professor Kaiju, Asuza Productions, The Toho Society, Azriel, Godzilla1985, The Immortal Red Fox, Eric Trin, Ultraman Ultimo, Inaba, The G Team 2, Halo Chief 27, Thanyaset Kanajira Yupat, Belaski Films, A Sam Called Sam, Eric Guzda, Gabriel Zunzuningui, Devin Pitsley, Prestige, Sergio Camacho, Ultriab, Jeff King, Kaiju X, Gojira 91, Dustin Beadle and the Next Decade Props and Costumes, Century Blue, Jacob Baines, Gasner, William Zorio, Satoshi Mizushima, Deadzilla, and Hayden Bell. Thank you for letting me spend your hard-earned money on pieces of plastic made for children in a different country that I got to blow up. Love you all.